I suspect this will be the fastest I ever sail on a boat, she gets. Oh no, apprehensive no, like right hell. I'm looking forward to getting on board. I've sailed some really fast multis in my time, but this is just another step upwards. It's from the normal speeds we're getting up to. I believe we hit 42 while I was on board. The highest I've ever done before is 32. Now we're used to tuning yachts in a pretty old fashioned way. No, no, no. This is a completely different game. I was just a privilege to be there with them, just listening to them and watching the way they handle the boat. Phenomenal. This is the Sailing World on Water for July 31, 2020. Here are the highlights of sailing last week. Sir Robin Knox Johnson visited the Ineos Team UK base and went for a 42 knot sail. In Australia, on Sydney Harbour, the Middle Harbour 16 foot skiffs were out racing on a beautiful day. In France, we wrapped the Dream Cup. On Lake Garda it was the 2020 National Open Skiff Regatta. First retiree from the Bondi Arctic was our Kia Paprik with a broken foil. It's back home for repairs. Over to Tantino and the foiling windsurfers who are making their mark. The ROR's Louis Habib talks to French super sailor Michel Destroyo two times winner of the Bondi Globe, the hardest sporting event on our planet. And World Sailing TV talks to Marit Bomester of the Netherlands, gold medal laser radial winner in Rio. Now for some fast skiff action on Sydney Harbour. Five line honors of the Dream Cup in La Trinité sur Mer went to the old team trimer and Edmond de Rothschild with Franck Camas and Charles Cardrelier two hours in front of Thomas Coville and his team on Sodibo. In Dare Class 40, Ian Lipinski Poland finished first three hours ahead of Luke Berry France. After a close duel, Sam Goodchild Great Britain had the upper hand on Tom La Père K France in the Solo Figaro 3 class, arriving 45 minutes earlier.
sait pas expliquer la casse du nouveau foil aujourd'hui. Il y a plein d'investigations qui sont en cours. C'est une inconnue qui est, je dois avouer, moi, à mon niveau déroutante parce que j'ai jamais eu autant d'inconnus sur, sur une casse comme celle-là. Ce qui est difficile, c'est le cumul, à vrai dire. La casse mécanique, elle fait partie de la vie de marin. Maintenant, c'est vrai que bah là, on, on subit une série noire qui est compliquée à gérer pour l'équipe, mais qui est aussi très compliquée à gérer pour le marin, parce qu'il bah, faut réussir à garder la tête froide et garder son sang froid. Ce qu'on a essayé de lui dire, c'est que c'est tout simplement qu'il ne faut rien lâcher, comme, comme quand on fait de la compétition. C'est-à-dire que tant que l'arrivée du vent des globes n'est pas passée, rien n'est perdu. Ce qui est sûr, c'est que tout le monde est mobilisé. Aujourd'hui, on a une vraie course contre la montre qui est lancée. Une première qui est rendre opérationnel de manière plus fiable les deux foils dont on dispose aujourd'hui pour que le bateau puisse renaviguer au plus vite, on espère, dans 3-4 semaines. Et lancer la construction de nouveaux foils pour le vent des globes, sachant que voilà, la deadline pour un timing serré mais raisonnable pour construire des foils, c'est demain. Well, that was a nice introduction, a, a little bit of a trombone blow there. Michel Desjoyer, welcome to the 15th edition of the Royal Ocean Racing Club Time Over Distance Series. This week's special guest is none other than Le Professeur, Michel Desjoyer, who joins us from his home in Concarno. Michel, welcome to the show. Hey, hi, everybody. Thank you, Louis, for that. Uh, that's quite a pleasure to to discuss for uh, all those uh, all those uh, situations. We love sailing and we love to speak about that. Um, so sometime I will uh, have to improve my English, but I will do my best for you to understand everything I I could yeah. say. Yeah, thank uh, you. For, sometime... yeah, thank you for talking to us in English, Michel. Have you ever done a live show? like this in English before? Uh, no, and uh, most of the time I do not uh, accept to, to make that <laughs> because it's quite <laughs> difficult for me. It's uh, require uh, a lot of concentration, but uh, when you want to, when you love to speak about what you love, that's quite easier. Um, that's why I, I accept and also you are very good. You have a very good ambassador here in France who told me, "Oh yes, you can go with Louis, no problem. It will uh, it will be fun. You will appreciate." Which is uh, our lady from your place, which is Samantha. So, Sam Davies. 
Yeah, Sam, because I call her and I say, oh, Sam, uh, are you sure I can do that with uh, Loué, how it is, uh, how is the, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the the feeling with journalists uh, is a question of, of feeling. Uh, and you can have, uh, it's not a question of being a bad or, or, or good journalist, just you have the feeling with them or, and uh, to spend one time in life in such a situation, you have to get a good feeling. And, and uh, Sam told me that, yeah, you can do. And uh, I realized that we met uh, uh, a few years ago. We we'll speak about that a few yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I remember, oh, for sure, I know him. him. I didn't remember the name, but I, I, I remember the feeling. So let's go. And I call you <laughs> and I say, yes, we go. Yeah, okay. I am. Well, well, thank you for this very early picture of you. Um, just explain... Uh, um, the sailing was in your blood from from when you were born. Is that right, Michel? Um, I could have sh give you uh, earlier picture from me. Um, the first one was in my uh, I do call that uh, when you are a baby with the the, the car with a baby car. Um, okay. I was maybe uh, two or three and a half. Uh, this picture was has been made on. Um, on Côte d'Or, when, when I was 20, I was uh, one of the youngest uh, crew members of the Whitbread in uh, 85, 86. Okay. Um, my, uh, why do I have uh, uh, salted water in my blood? In my, uh, my blood? Uh, that's quite easier. Uh, here I live in port la uh, I was born just near in Concano. And... Uh, my parents uh, created here in Port Laforet before that this arbor uh, was uh, was done. Uh, they had a, a, a yard not to build but but to take care of them to make them uh, having a good winter on the on the, um, on the um, roof. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, and the guys at the at the yard made it made the, the paint uh, replace piece of wood uh, check the rig uh, uh, wintering the engine and and um, and because the house was close to the yard and also that because my uh, parents um, uh, decided that uh, the school for uh, for their 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 kids uh, was would not be good enough. Then my uh, first uh, years at school was at home with my mummy making uh, the lessons. Okay. Um, so I went at, I, at school with other kids uh, when I was uh, maybe 10 only, uh, nine and a half, 10. Um, and all that before, our place uh, between two lessons was to run through the, the yard and to help the guys to work on the boat and and to because we knew how to use tools and uh, everything and we were young and we were small and we were like a snake we were able to go in the boat uh, helping them, them to, to work um so it's not only salted water but it's uh, also uh, wood and, uh, and, and and technical aspect of the boat uh, and after that we saw arriving uh, uh polyester glass uh, resin mm -hmm. Uh, boats arriving, then uh, starting, uh, we saw racing boats of carbon. Uh, a few years later, I was uh, less than print. Uh, CDK technology started to to build boats, uh, racing boats, like this one, for example, Formula 40, which was uh, quite incredible uh, um, years, because in fact, what's happened at this moment is um, it was easy to make uh, catamaran flying on one hull, uh, the first, uh, one of the first trimarans, um, Formula 40, was uh, Jean Le Camps one because mm -hmm. before, most of them were uh, trimaran, uh, were catamarans, and uh, and Jean Le Cam with my brothers, with two of my brothers at least. Well, let's let's look at the. You, the this is the the results, and you win the Vendée Globe. That must be a dream for. For any solo sailor, that is the ultimate dream. It must be. Um, I don't know if it's the, the ultimate for every sailor, um, because some of them, they don't like this, and then they will not compete in that, and they will not appreciate to do that. Um, that's 
that's quite a very nice situation, like because uh, when you want, which, is, which which was my case. Uh, in fact, you work very hard for that. You prepare, the, you build the boat, you prepare the boat, you sail. Uh, you went in the South Ocean. You were close to break the mast a lot of time. You mm-hmm. you had a lot. Um, one of the main st- uh, lesson uh, I gave to, to uh, François Gabard when when we we worked together for his uh, for his Vendée Globe in 2012 was. Okay, you are very good at sea. You are a very good tactician. You are a very good trimmer. You are a very good helmer. What you have to understand it is each day you will have a problem. Each day you will have to solve this problem. If you don't do that, if you consider that a problem is a problem, but not a problem, but not to each problem, you have to find a solution and you will find a solution because you don't have the choice. Then you will be able to to go through the Vendée Globe and to to appreciate. If you consider each time um, the the you have a problem, which is every day, uh, each time you 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 take a, 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 a hammer on the head, like a, how do you do you call that a, a piece of uh, of metal, a thin stick that a you, nail, a nail, a nail yeah. you push in the in the wood. Um, uh, then after maybe 10 days of race, then you will be already uh, uh, not broken, but uh, finished. You will, yeah, finished. And you will, uh, yeah. you, it will be a pain in the ass to finish the race and to finish the race yeah. just because you have contract, because you have sponsor, because you have family, because you have friends who work hard for them, uh, uh, for, for you. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, hopefully I was very happy to make my two Vendée Globes. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Including the first one for sure. Hi, my name is Mare Baumeister from the Netherlands uh, and I'm sailing the laser radio class. I won an Olympic gold medal in 2016 and um, yeah, it was just great to be on the top step of the podium after being second in the London 2012 Olympics. Uh, I was very much looking forward to the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, uh, but yeah, obviously public health is the most important, so hopefully we can do the Olympics next year in 2021. Um, yeah, and to be honest, lockdown wasn't too bad for me as I bought this very lovely house and. I wasn't able to spend much time at home, so it was really nice to spend some time at home. And in Holland, we had this intelligence lockdown, um, so we were still able to go on the streets. And well, I had my own gym at the backyard, so I was able to keep fit. Uh, so it wasn't too bad. And uh, yeah, the Olympics will be next year, but it's quite insecure when we can travel, if we can go to Tokyo this year or not. But. Uh, I'm happy that summertime has arrived in Holland, so the water is not too cold to sail and I'll just train here until there will be events or we can go to Tokyo and then hopefully the Olympics will be next year, fingers crossed.